guys, but I don't see us. Okay, but I don't see you. Hi, everyone. We're trying to figure out these technical difficulties with um, Zoom. There you are. Are you on? I don't see you. You don't see me? Mm -mm. Go ahead and try it again. There you go. All right, we're on. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. We're just here having a conversation and hoping you ladies are having a great Friday. I just wanted to um, spend some time with my friend Lydia. And I know that y'all love the San Antonio Moms Group. Gosh, I'm just curious, Lydia, how long has San Antonio Moms Group been going on now? It's been um, a little over a year, right? Two years, actually. Really? Wow. In 2018, yes. Two years. Oh yes. my gosh. And yeah. what, what and it grew you, so much. Yeah. So just tell me what made you decide to start a San Antonio Moms um, group? Um, as a mom and a businesswoman, uh, I was always looking for ways in which I can feel like a mom, but also I can promote my business. And it was uh, pretty difficult to find uh, that platform that kind of um, helped both problems, helped me with both uh, situations. Yeah. So uh, one day I just decided to um, just create that platform. I saw a problem and uh, I came up with a solution. And here we are today enjoying uh, um, this platform and um, as moms and as business moms, business women, um, you know, being able to do so many things and, uh, you know, uh, knowing and getting to know so many moms and so many women who are doing so many things, so many wonderful things in the community and for their families. That's awesome. And so how many, how many members do you have more or less in this group? Uh, today, we just turned uh, 9.4K. Uh, 9. Uh, Wow, that is crazy. Oh my gosh. So we, we are going to the rate of a hundred moms a week now. That's that's amazing. And yes. and I guess other moms are inviting people to come in. And yes. So that, a that's... lot of moms are inviting other moms. And also we have a lot of moms moving their family into town. And those are um, um, looking for a lot of recommendations. And that's why they become part of the group. Okay. That is so cool. I mean, I, I think uh, you coming up with that solution, because you're right, there's a lot of different groups that you can be part of, but you, they may not allow, you know, uh, marketing your business on there or, you know, making. Or they allow it just one day, um, one day a week or, um you know, every group is different, uh, you know, targets yeah. different problems and helps with different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted something that um, moms have an opportunity of actually promoting their business so they can take care of their families, especially yeah. through the COVID year. Gosh, that was just, it's been crazy. So a lot has taken place though and you've grown quite a bit not only with your mom's group but just about your business and you know March is actually the celebration it's International Women's History Month and yes I, yes that's something and so we've got but we I mean there's been a lot of uh, a lot of things that we've had to do uh, maybe just to adapt to all the changes of COVID but I'm just thrilled that your business has grown and you're just doing what you love. And so for those that are listening here for the first time, maybe they don't know a little bit about you, Lydia. I mean, you, you obviously have a passion um, to help women and not only connecting and being able to um, support each other in business, but in case people don't know, you're in the, the senior care placement. Can you tell me just a little bit um, what got you involved in that? How long ago and what that was like? Uh, definitely, I would love to talk about it. It's one of my uh, passions and um, it has been a dream and a vision for a long time. And um, as most of you know, as children, we have dreams and we have visions and we want things to happen to us, you know, when we get, uh, when we get older. And um, I was that little girl that um, grew up very poor 
and we were blessed um, to have someone from America. Um, as you know, I'm from Romania. Um, so um, when I was nine years old, we had someone from America sending us every single month two boxes of food. And every single time we would open those boxes, we, it would bring tears and smiles and all kinds of emotions to us as children and to our parents. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's what uh, kind of uh, created a desire and a vision and a dream inside of me um, that I wanted to do the same thing when I grow older. So um, long story short, um, after years, when I got to be 23, I found myself in the United States of America. I knew that it was the only place I could make those dreams come true. Wow. And when I came here, it was very difficult for me to um, find just any job because I couldn't speak English. Um, I was just understanding a little bit, but not too much. So someone helped me to... Um, uh, start working in an assisted living facility, um, which I actually purchased six months later. So I, um, I found myself working um, in an industry uh, totally different than what I have studied. You know, as a you know, young woman, I went to theology um, and I found myself in an industry that I fell in love with so much. And I realized that this was actually what I was looking for. Um, helping families, helping seniors at the end of their life. That was my biggest calling of my life. Wow. Being there, uh, holding their hand when they take their last breath was the most fulfilling thing for me. And um, that's when I realized that's my calling. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my gosh and, and and so how did how did uh how did it I guess change your life by just being around and helping seniors how did it change yes every day every experience every interaction with them and with their families got me closer to understand um what it means to uh, actually understand seniors, mm -hmm. uh, to understand the diseases they have to deal with at the end of life, especially memory problems. I got to learn the language of um, Alzheimer's and dementia, and it's not easy. Many people cannot even comprehend or understand or have the patience to understand it. Uh, it's a totally different language, and I call it the language of love. Why? Because it takes so much out of you to be able to understand someone who speaks a totally, uh, total different language. You know, it's the language of smiles, of hugs. It doesn't have words. It has physical reactions. And um, when I found that, I, I, I thought... It was the biggest, most fulfilling um, thing that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Wow. So <laughs> when you say the hugs, and uh, so what are some of the things that people or family can do to help a loved one that is going through Alzheimer's or dementia? If they're talking and they are talking about something that's not taking place or I don't know, how do you, how do you, what's the best way um, as a loved one to respond to them? Cause I'm sure it gets very right. Frustrating. Cause maybe, yes. Yeah. I think the first thing we have to do. Yes. I think the first thing we have to uh, get rid of is reasoning. Okay. Um, we cannot reason with someone um especially when they are old. It doesn't matter if they have memory problems or not, but I'm talking about memory problems because that, that is the um, most of my patients that I take care of is Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay. Uh, reasoning is out of the picture. You cannot reason with someone that uh, cannot 
comprehend, not even two sentences, not even one sentence, sometimes okay. not even a word or two. So you have to show, you have to express what you want to show them, what, what you want them to do. You have to express it by by uh, uh, physical reactions, you know, okay. show them with your hands, guide them with your smiles, make them feel good by just opening your eyes and being happy. And, and, and those are the things that a lot of family members and a lot of, you know, we were not taught that. You know, okay. we, we, okay. we try to reason, we try to, why don't they understand? why okay. doesn't she understand yeah that's you know we we can say those things uh we have to understand that they are not at a point anymore to understand we have to just keep them safe and comfortable yeah and uh, um we have to um uh understand um they they don't understand <laughs> you know that's what <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's the point yeah oh so, you know, um, it can be a little bit challenging, I think, for maybe having a, um, a parent that's getting a little older and needs that little extra care. So what do you say to someone that is, I guess, just not able to, you know, care for them and it just becomes a little bit more than they can taking care of their family and working? So uh, what, what is, what is something that, um, um, someone can do and still feel like they're being taken care of? And I know that you're, you've been a caregiver yourself. So is there any, like any suggestions of what they should look for? Um, making sure that they go to the right people or facilities. Am I making any sense? <laughs> yes, you do. You do. So um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, you know, because a lot of families, they don't know what's out there. Yeah. So and, and sometimes they feel frustrated. They still want to keep their loved ones in their home. And that's the best place to be with family. Okay. Sometimes we live in a society that everything is so fast and so busy and so hectic. You know, children work. Sometimes both, both parents work. You know, and sometimes yeah. they can, uh, uh, um, um, you know, uh, uh, they can be on the side and not have the full attention of their children. Okay. So um, um, I never encourage anyone to put them in a facility. Um, first, you know, I always encourage children to take care of their parents if they can. But yeah. if they get to a point if they get to a point where they are not able and it, it becomes something very stressful uh, uh, for the family, yeah. then um, there are uh, quite a few options out there. Um, I, being a placement agent and um, senior advisor, uh, I work with uh, over 120 uh, care homes in San Antonio. Okay. And um, what, uh, what I can say about care homes, and I call them actually the closest thing to home because they are actually residential care homes okay. and um, they can uh, provide services for seniors of any level of care, uh, but in a very small setting. Okay. Um, the care is very personalized to each person. That is why um, it's so unique and so different and so much more comfortable and beautiful, you know, for the family and for uh, their loved ones. Yeah. So, um, yes. Do a lot of people uh, that are at that time frame that they may need that personal care, do they have, do you find that, they have like a long-term care program that helps with the expenses or how do, how do families, cause I, I, I've heard it gets, it can be quite expensive. No. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. It can get expensive. Some families, they prepared in advance. They have um, long-term care insurance or um, uh, life insurance. Uh, some uh, have been in the military and they get VA benefits. Okay. Some uh, sold their homes and they uh, or they have assets 
and they get rid of the assets so they can pay for their um for their care. Um, so there is a couple of solutions out there and I do work with um, specialists on different areas. So if anyone has uh, needs help or support, uh, you let me know and I will connect you to the right person that can help you. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I know we talked too, because you, um, you have also met people that maybe because of their financial situation, they're not able to get the care that they would like to have. Or um, so you were thinking about doing something to put together for that. Can you tell me a little bit, you know, on your idea? Yes, yes, I can. Actually, <laughs> the last, I've been working with so many families lately um, in the last two, three years. And I get so many calls on a daily basis from families uh, who are trying to find a place for their loved ones okay. and when I go through the um uh through the budgeting and to find out what benefits they have um most of the time uh, they don't have almost anything other than SSI and Medicaid and um they don't pay for care homes so uh, when someone has SSI and Medicaid and Medicare um, that is not enough to pay for assisted living or uh, care homes, residential care homes. Okay. Um, the only place, um, you know, they would be able to, um, um, that would be able to be cared for would be a nursing home. And um, a lot of the families, they just don't want to go in a nursing home. They just want to be in a uh, care home or um, assisted living for a smaller, um, right. you know, places. Just so it, it is very, touch. yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Wow. So uh, I have been um, thinking for quite a while. Like we are visionaries. We um, when we you know when enough people come with problems to us, we always we we get frustrated and we are thinking of a solution. How can I help? So um, I am uh, on my way of um, opening a nonprofit to be able to get funding for um, seniors who cannot afford a care home. And we will be able to sponsor one senior at a time. Oh, that's uh, and great. that, yes, and that I know it will make a big difference in their lives. And exactly. they are the ones that have to be uh, helped and appreciated because they created what we have today. They were the ones who fought the wars and walked in front of us and built what we have today. So we got to take care of them. That's really amazing, though. That and uh, just trying to figure out another solution for for families that may want that extra care. So I'm just let me just do some real quick. I'm just going to close the door here for just a second because I hear some noise. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I don't know. <laughs> so with, um, I guess with that in mind, I know that you also, just like I gave uh, you some information today, uh, you also are able to help people, right? Find maybe someone to come to their home, right? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, um, so uh, are you referring to the placement? Care, the, the care caregiving that you are able to oh yes so yeah. one of other things that we do and we offer uh to families again um you know having to deal and having to help and support a lot of families on a daily basis mm -hmm. many times i get calls from families who are uh who still want to keep their loved ones in their home but they can't find caregivers and sometimes uh, um, they can't find reliable caregivers, right? Um, which is which is really difficult, you know. So um, we, what we have done, we um, created a um, another um, way of helping families uh, with caregivers. So we have um, caregivers on demand. Um, it takes a couple of days to. Uh, uh, them in place but yeah. we can we we can provide caregivers 
especially living caregivers, uh, which um, gives family the opportunity of having help 24 seven at a fraction of the cost if they would go with any other agency. Wow, that's awesome. Yes. So it sounds like you can take care of uh, situations where someone is needing to be placed, whether it's a personal care, assisted living, uh, you can also- Memory care. Memory care. You can also help uh, with caregiving at their home if they're not ready to leave their home. Um, and now with your thought process of doing like a nonprofit for those who are wanting to uh, qualify, maybe, you know, through your um, nonprofit to help them with care. Yes. So um, sounds like you, you like the one-stop shop. <laughs> so do you, I'm just we, curious. We want to you... create that feeling. We want to create that feeling. We don't want to send anyone away. Yeah. If we can help, we would do our best to help families. What are some of the things that you think that younger moms are, are just younger um, in our lives that w- what we should do to prepare for that time that w- when we become seniors, what is something that we should plan for now that you know can help down the road? Sure. First, uh, first thing I think we should uh, uh, think hardly of um, our financials, mm-hmm. um, having long-term care insurance, uh, having life insurance, having um, any any kind of benefits that that we would pay for the care, mm-hmm. especially paying for the care for the facility that you actually want to be in, not be forced to be in a facility that you don't like. Yes, yes, and stay healthy. The healthier you are the longer and healthier you're going to be living. <laughs> That's true. Take care of your mind. Take care of your mind. Plus you, you've actually have turned around some of your patients, right? Just from diet, right? Just helping them. Definitely. With food. I can see a big difference when um, our patients uh, eat healthy and we provide um, uh, very nutritious meals on daily basis. Um, we can see a big difference uh, of improvement in their health. Um, okay. Yes. Wow. So um, I just, I know that there's lots of moms and they might think, oh, you know, it's, it's a little bit further down the road. But I think the point that you talked about was long-term care. Um, and I don't know if you work with anyone that does that or not, but. Uh, I do. Right? Actually, you know? I do. And okay. Yes. Yes, that's good. I do have resources for every type of insurance Mm -hmm. uh, for VA benefits. Uh, I work with uh, very closely with people that I trust and I already have families with, uh, you know, and I got amazing results and reviews. So uh, I'm not going to send you to someone that I've never worked with. I'm going to send you to someone that is very trustworthy and very close to me. Okay. Well, some of the things that people don't know too, and, and I don't know if that's okay to mention, but you also have a personal care home. Yes. Yes, yes. I do. Yeah. I have been uh, owning personal care homes since 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, I own an assisted living facility in California and then um, a care home here in um, Bernie, on Bernie stage. And then um, I opened another one in Rogers Ranch two years ago. Yes. So I do um, own a care home. So when I don't do placements and when I am not out there helping families, I definitely uh, love on my patients. That's awesome. So what is something that you think um, that just keeps you that passion for what you do? Is it maybe seeing, hearing from families? Uh, what, what keeps that fire burning that what, on, on, on waking up every day and doing what you do? <laughs> yes, yes. I think uh, I'm a very giving person. I love to show, um, I, I love to show love and I love to show uh, affection. So when I'm giving my patients my love and my affection and I see them 
uh, uh, give me back their love and affection. That keeps me going every single day. That gives me the energy. Like I've done the most important thing today. I gave something and I received back. It's not just giving one way, you received. And it's always a uh, uh, fulfilling and, and uh, I always, I'm filled up with a lot of love. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yes. Well, anyone that wants to get in touch with Lydia, you definitely can through this, by messaging her through the San Antonio Moms, you are the, the administrator and the, I don't know, creator of the group. But uh, they can also just give you a call on your cell. Did you want to give your number? Sure, I can give my number. Uh, 210-849-7933. Okay. And so, Lydia, what else that you might want to mention that I didn't talk about that you might want to tell everyone about? Um, if you have any questions regarding senior care, elderly, your parents, your grandparents, anything that has to do with uh, their care, or if you just have um, a question that you have wanted for a long time to ask someone, ask me. Uh, my services are free to anyone. Oh, great. Um, so I, yes. So um, I don't charge families and their loved ones for my services. So you can freely ask me anything. That's awesome. Okay, well, I don't know if there's anything else, but I think that we did cover a lot. <laughs> Is there anything, I think anything else other than that? I, I think uh, we could probably do another discussion on something, just a separate topic, but I think you've got a lot of um, great advice and you are resourceful as far as what's out there in the community. And I'm so proud of you, Lydia. I think you've done an Thank amazing you. Just, yes. And so, I want everyone to know that uh, me and Gina, we became friends about six, seven, eight years ago. Yes. Um, through Facebook. Yes. I was inquiring to become a volunteer and to uh, Gina's events. And um, that's how uh, we met the first time and we became so good friends and we have done so many things together. Um, and I want everyone to know that actually Gina, she is the um, owner of three local newspapers and two or three business associations, three business associations. Yes. So if you, yes. So if you have a business and you need marketing, or you need to go, uh, you are looking for uh, networking events. She is the greatest resource in San Antonio. And I'm telling you from um, for years, I've been to a lot of networking events. There is nothing like Gina's events. So get in touch with us, get in touch with yeah. Gina. And um, we Thank would you. love to see you at our events. For sure. So make sure you, Lydia could also just send you information so that she can get to me if you're interested in getting any invitations to uh, our networking opportunities. So yeah, I think we did good. I don't know if anyone who's here is listening. I've been looking at the Facebook page, but so far we're still on. <laughs> this has been fun. I, I really, yeah. I think this is gonna be interesting just to see how it posts, but uh, again, anybody who wants to get in touch with Lydia, uh, she's a wonderful person, very caring, and just does a great job for families. So make sure that you keep her uh, in mind for all of your, I guess, senior needs or senior questions. And I'm just going to say thank bye. you. Yeah. Well, bye, -bye. I'm gonna, bye. Hold on. Let me see if I can stop this. It might, it might disconnect us.